To illustrate how can we use our method of computing the volume of a cone that we have seen in our previous video to a much more generalized situation. Here what we have drawn is a solid that you can interpret as you want to interpret it and we and the solid uh, most importantly is caught between two planes which are perpendicular to x axis one is given by x equal to a and the another is given by x equal to b so here we are going to make use of a function which is called a cross sectional function so what is a cross section if you are not familiar with this we take a plane which is perpendicular to x axis and we see th how this plane cuts uh, this region so it will of course cut this region uh, cut this solid in a in a in a, a planar region and let me let me denote this area of the planar region by ax and we are going to we are going to denote this function ax by the cross sectional area function or simply the area function we are going to make use of this function to determine the uh, the volume of the solid as it is uh, as it is uh, uh, customary in in integral calculus we are going to divide our uh, our volume our solid into in a case small pieces like this that we have shaded in uh, yellow before so let me call this vk so this is the kth kth the uh, kth piece and we can see that in this way i can write the volume of uh, our, our, our solid v as sum of volume of the small pieces vk using the third axiom that we have uh, talked about in our previous video now what is volume of vk we squeeze our volume of vk between two quantities one is a big mk delta xk and another is a small mk delta xk i must explain to you what are this quantity small mk big mk delta xk delta xk is rather obvious this is given by xk minus xk minus 1 which is the length of the interval on the x axis mk is the point on x axis where the biggest cross sectional area is achieved in the interval xk minus 1 to xk and small mk is the point on the x axis where the smallest cross sectional area is achieved in uh, in the interval xk minus 1 xk now uh, when we see this we can easily see that uh, this gives us uh, uh, this is the volume of a right circular cylinder so let me use a shorthand that inscribes inscribes or let's say that uh, circumscribes circumscribes uh, vk and this is and this is similarly the volume of a right circular cylinder which inscribes uh, the solid vk now uh, we know we use this formula that volume of v is equal to summation of volume of vk to uh, uh, to get a uh, to get a further uh, strong inequality so we start with volume of vk uh, which lies between a small mk delta xk and a big mk delta xk we just put a summation uh, uh, for k equal to 1 to n throughout the inequality to get that the volume of v is now squeezed between summation k from 1 to n a small mk delta xk and summation k equal to n a, a big mk delta xk now uh, if i want to take limit we somehow want to take limit as we have seen in our previous videos we can see we can uh, we can somehow relate these quantities to the Riemann sum of a function so what is the Riemann sum 
so this limit when we take the summation k equal to 1 to n a m k uh, delta x k we, if we know that if this function the area function that we have just described is continuous or even more generally if it is integrable then this Riemann sum is exactly the, the limit of the Riemann sum is exactly equal to the integral fx dx or here ax dx uh, where a is the area function. So again uh, let me formalize this. So by using the notion of Riemann sum we know that if the function ax is Riemann integrable then this two sum converge to the same limit and this limit is nothing but integral a to b fx dx and consequently the volume of v must be equal to integral a fx dx so what is fx here a is f is nothing but uh, the function ax the cross sectional area so let us go ahead to see a more concrete situation this is called the solids of revolutions so here what are we going to do we have a function fx so let us uh, assume for the time being that this function is integrable and uh, we have this nice curve which is given by the graph of this equation y equal to fx and suppose we have the area here the region here which is bounded above by this curve y equal to fx below by x axis on the left hand side by the line x equal to a on the right hand side by the line x equal to b and suppose that we rotate this area about x axis to get a uh, solid and the, this kind of solid is called solid of revolution and we are interested in trying to determine the area or the volume of the uh, solid of uh, revolution. So let us start with y equal to fx. We rotate this region that we have just mentioned about x axis. So uh, we should now compute what is the function ax. I claim that this function is equal to a times fx square and how do we do see that so here we have our point uh, x equal to small x and what is the height of this so the corresponding point here is actually x comma fx and if I rotate this if we rotate this we are going to get a circular region or a disk which has uh, radius small uh, radius uh, f of small x uh, and what is the area of this disk that we are going to get after revolution this is nothing but pi fx square so by our formula what we have we can derive is that the volume of the region that we are going to get uh, is equal to integral of pi fx square dx where the integral is taken in the interval a to b this method of computing uh, the volume of uh, such kind of solids is called the disk method because when we take the cross section uh, when we take the cross section of such uh, solid as we have mentioned then we are always going to get a disk and uh, and if we uh, and if we are in a situation where we can apply our fundamental theorem of calculus namely if we can find an antiderivative of the function pi fx square which is uh, which is here denoted by g then this volume is simply given by gb minus ga let me now look at the more concrete situation that we have started our journey with in terms of computing volumes so let us go back to the example of the cone that we started our journey with and let us try to compute the volume of the cone using this method so here what do we have we have a line joining 0 0 the origin and uh, the point h comma r we draw a line perpendicular this to this uh, to the x-axis which cuts the x-axis at the point h comma 0 we rotate this region about about x-axis to get our cone 
and how do we compute uh, in this case the uh, volume of the cone so the volume of the cone is given by so we just need to copy this formula so this formula is given by 0 to h pi fx square now what is fx fx is nothing but r divided by h times x so r by h times x whole square dx so let us try to compute this this is exactly equal to so pi r h all those things comes out so this is pi r square by h square and here we are left with integral from 0 to h x square dx and this is nothing but pi r square by h square and here we know that an antiderivative of the function x square is given by x cube by 3 so x cube by 3 and we are going to take the uh, take the difference uh, from x equal to h to x equal to 0 so this is going to be pi r square h divided by 3 so this says that this is kind of a reality check that what we have computed using using integral calculus and now we have made it uh, consolidated by using using fundamental theorem of calculus over here now last but not the least let me just introduce what is called washer method i am not going to show you an example but these are going to be done in terms of exercises so here what we have is an interval x equal to a and x equal to b and suppose we are uh, going to suppose we are going to uh, find the volume of this region which is bounded by the graph of two functions the first one being y equal to f2x and the second one being y equal to f1x that satisfy the property that f1x is less than or equal to f2x for all x inside the interval a b so in other words the graph of the uh, equation y equal to f1x always lies below the graph of the equation y equal to f2x so now we have a region uh, which is shaded in uh, white that is bounded uh, in between these two graphs and we want to compute the, the, the volume of the solid which we, uh, which we obtain by rotating this region shaded in white about x axis. How do we do it? Most intuitively we will first uh, compute the the volume the volume of the solid uh, which is given by rotating this uh, yellow region which is below the below the graph of y equal to f two x and then we simply subtract the 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 volume of the solid which is obtained by rotating the region which appears below the graph of the function or the equation y equal to f1x and now we have seen uh, we know how do we compute these areas so this uh, green area is of course uh, computed as we have seen before is let me call it v1 so v1 is given by pi a to b f1x whole square dx and the yellow region or the uh, or the uh, yellow solid is given by v2 uh, or the volume of the yellow solid is given by v2 which is nothing but this quantity pi times integral from a to b f2x whole square dx in particular what we obtain is the volume of the required solid is given by this quantity pi f2x whole square minus f1x whole square times dx we will see more examples of this sort in our or in our exercises so we are going to see more methods of computing volume of uh, solids in our subsequent videos